If you've used services such as AOL, then you've probably heard of the infamous dial-up sound. You know the one. You know the But why does it sound that way anyways? And how come every time you connect to the internet, it mostly sounds the same? Well today we're going to be analyzing the sound through a spectrogram to see exactly what's going on. It turns out that all those sounds have a key role during the process, or a handshake. Now keep in mind that this specific track we're going to be analyzing isn't actually recorded by me. It's something that I found online. Even though I do have Windows 95 VMware running on my computer, I can't actually connect the modem to it. Because it's a laptop. Now without further ado, let's go and analyze the track. First off, let's hear the track in full. Now first, let's start with this clip. This right here is a dial tone. If you don't know what a dial tone is, it's just something that the phone does to ensure that it's ready to make a call. But keep in mind, this is not a phone doing this, this is a modem. Now next up is this. Now what modems and services usually do is call an actual number. In fact, I'll put a cool AOL number searching thingy in the description. What's weird about this number though is that it's 12 digits long, suggesting that it might be from China or Finland or something like that. Now here's where the real handshake begins. Now we're going to be analyzing these four beeps. It's important to note that this signal is coming from the other end of the line, or the answering modem. Basically, the modem on the other end is trying to initiate what's known as a modem protocol standard. Using one of these standards means that both the calling and the receiving modems can talk in a language that they understand. Most commonly, the V8 BIS standard. Once the receiving modem requests to switch into a standard, then it will emit this tone. Now the receiving modem wants the calling modem to list this standard that's capable of doing. Which there are a whole bunch of, and they can all vary in speed. This tone is the calling modem accepting the request. This tone is the calling modem trying to switch into information transfer mode which is a fancier version of data transferring except with user-related information. If you forgot what these tones sounded like, then let's play them over one more time. Also, I'll use little modem icons to signify whether the signal is coming from the calling modem or the receiving modem. Now we know that the modems are ready to transfer information, but what kind of information? What we're about to see. Next up are these three thingies. All of this is the data in question. All of this is binary and is being translated through a process called frequency shift keying. This bit right here is coming from the calling modem. It includes some of its most basic modulation protocol standards, which is more often than not V8. BIA. This bit also includes information on whether or not it can signify acknowledgement, which it probably can, and some other information if it somehow be needed. This right here is coming from the receiving modem. It's suggesting which modem protocol standard to start out with, not necessarily keep all the way through. After all, there are other much faster standards. This final bit right here is coming from the calling modem and does nothing else except to say, okay, I agree. Now let's listen to this part one more time, and again, I'll put the little icons up there. Next up is this part. This tone is emitted by the receiving modem. This tone disables echo suppression, because if echo suppression was enabled, it could corrupt data. But what is echo suppression? Well, let me explain. If you talk into your phone, then there's a chance that you might be able to hear yourself on the other end, which can get pretty annoying. So that's why phone companies have echo suppression, so that won't happen as much. Now, that's good for people when they talk on the phone, but bad for modems. Because, as I mentioned before, it could corrupt data being transmitted over the phone lines. So that's why we have this tone. This bit is emitted by the caller modem, it's just the same thing played over six times. The calling modem is giving some other information, but mainly two things. First, it lists all its possible standards, and second, it lists its type of connection to the public switch telephone network, which could be either a landline, cellular, or even a satellite, just to name a few. This last bit is emitted by the receiving modem and is repeated three times. It too is also listing its standards and type of connection to the network.
Now let's move on to the probing segment. In order to understand this, let me explain carrier waves. Carrier waves are modulated waveforms that carry information. The carrier frequency is the center frequency of that carrier wave. All of this is coming from both the calling and the receiving modems, and is basically them trying to settle on a carrier frequency. This part also defines the modulation rate, which is very similar to the bit rate, as in they both define the bits per second. So basically, how fast can we do all these ones and zeros? Now one of these tones, well actually it's a whole bunch of tones, but one of these tones comes from the calling modem, and the other comes from the receiving modem. These layers of tones are probing signals used to measure the actual telephone lines. That is if the connection is over a landline or not. This tone is emitted by the calling modem and is a list of achievable bit rates and modulation rates. This part is coming from the answering modem and is the answering modem deciding on a final bit rate as well as a final modulation rate. If there are any issues for this process, then they're all stated throughout this part. So they can be compromised later. Now let's listen to this part one more time. Next is this part. Out of all this data, some of it has to do with the final, final decision of the bitrate. Most of it, however, is just random data. This one's coming from the receiving modem, and this one's coming from the calling modem. They have to learn how each of them sound in order to set up a full duplex transmission mode, which will allow them to talk at the same time. Now this one you can't usually hear over normal circumstances, but we're going to play it anyway. This right here is the sound of victory, it means that yeah you did it, everything you did so far is successful. This is admitted by both the calling and the receiving modem, because they did it, they can talk at the same time now. This is your data. This is what you came to the internet for, whether it be text or text. Now before I end the video, let's recap everything. Dial tone, then dialing a number. Requesting to switch into a modulation method and then accepting. Figuring out which standard to start out with. Disabling echo suppressors and then listing modem standards. Deciding bit rates and measuring phone lines. Sending a whole bunch of random data in order to set up a full duplex. And lastly, signifying that the connection has been accepted and receiving all the texts you're going to be reading. Thanks for watching. If you want to see some of my sources, check the description. Good day.